Καλησπέρα. Ακούγομαι. Hello everyone, can you hear me? Uh, I hope uh, everything is okay over there at Varevula Vulyahmeni. Thank you very much. It is with great pleasure that I get to see you, even remotely. Hello, Agelos, Maria, all the good friends and uh, partners in crime. I would like to thank Enrico for this invitation. This morning, I embarked on that journey and I was very happy that I would spend 30 beautiful hours on this amazing destination talking about local administration and sustainability. I managed to get as far as Artemision Tunnel when news broke in that a professional break-in happened at the town hall. They were going for my office, so the first thought was, okay, I, there's not much I can do even if I get back, let me continue with my journey. But the second thought was that I had to be here in order to deal with all the red tape processes uh, regarding forensics uh, and uh, the various police enforcement requirements. So I had to return, and this prevented me from joining you today. So, I would also like to say that in my capacity as first Vice President of KEDE, the Central Union of Municipalities, I would like to share the greetings of the President and the Board of KEDE. It is a wonderful initiative, just like it has already been described. Last year, the former president and current minister, Dimitris Papastergiou, was there, Telefonisus. This year, I should, I was supposed to be there because yesterday the board convened at Halkida, so you could realize that we talk uh, about significant distances here. Anyway, I would like to say that just like all the colleagues know, and at the same time, those who are involved in numerous administration organization bodies regarding the public, the municipal or private entities know that the agenda has changed. It has changed because now things have been reprioritized. We focus on sustainability, we focus on climate change and on, on all the challenges that we need to tackle. I'm afraid that things will become worse in the years to come and therefore we need to ask for local solutions. But we shouldn't miss the big picture. Think global, act local. I think that this is what will give us an uh, overview that we lead to ensuring that the heavy infrastructure, the old infrastructure, will be removed because they have nothing to, nothing similar, nothing relatable to the latest requirements and infrastructures required for a green organized city. As you all know, and as we all know, after the numerous bad choices that we have all made all around the Earth, the Earth is striking back and is striking back in a way that tries to motivate us in a way that makes it very hard to deal with with the already available means. We need to adjust our weapons. We need to adjust our arsenal. Because now things change. Natural phenomena have worsened. They ha extreme weather phenomena happen more frequently. The extreme floods in Thessaly last fall was just a typical example. 
But floods happen all around the world and they keep happening and repeating. So we all need to join our forces. And apart from the heavy infrastructure that some countries or municipalities might be missing, we need to opt for modern cutting-edge infrastructure that rely on words that the local administration was unaware of until recently, or even if we were not unaware of them, we had been using them in the wrong way just to make some buzz, be in fashion, just not to be lagging behind. We were using this green terminology without, however, generating or implementing any green policies. I'm talking about energy saving, energy production, waste management, and I am afraid that we haven't done a lot towards this direction in our country. Normally, waste treatment is a local obligation. However, today, we have small diversion from landfill rates and we have been outperformed by African countries such as Egypt, Tunisia and Morocco. This is, of course, a good thing for those countries because they put on their sleeves, they rolled up their sleeves in order to get down to work and get things happened because we know that landfilling is, is the least ecological option to go to. In any way, we are struggling to keep up and maintain the 12 or 14 percent diversion from landfilling rates. And we, as the municipal authorities, need to lead the way in what constitutes the cornerstone of our actions. Because we need to understand that, okay, building playgrounds and kindergartens is all good and well. Making our cities more beautiful, cities that are not endowed with the natural beauty of Elafonsos, for example, because Elafonsos is unique, has an unparalleled beauty. So we who are not that lucky need to capitalize on every single thing new infrastructure, things that will not be a cause on its own, but rather the means in order to achieve our primary objective, meaning better quality of life for the citizens and residents in our areas. And we also need to contribute to the worldwide effort to remedy the mistakes of the past, mistakes going back to decades. And if someone asks, what uh, do you expect from me to save the world? For example, a small insular municipality like Tillos of my friend Maria, yes. We need to start saving the world from Tilos, Elafonisus, a mountainous municipality, a rural municipality, an urban municipality, because at the end of the day, when combined, all those comprehensive approaches will be pieces of the same puzzle. And this will allow us to generate a massive way of transformation. And at the end of the day, our continent, uh, our country, the entire globe will be able to embark on that rationale, to embark on the boat, on the journey to change, to transformation. Our children, our grandchildren are responsible to massively and practically restore the damage caused by ourselves and our ancestors. So I would like to conclude by saying
that the islands are being faced with numerous problems, but they also have some opportunities. And sometimes the transformation or conversion of problems into opportunities can give us significant solutions. We talk about remote islands. Transportation most of the times is problematic. They are isolated for most of the year, but they also have a unique privilege. They have certain capabilities, they have certain limits, geographic and other limits, and within their capacity, within their abilities, they are able to develop meaningful applications. For example, in the case of waste treatment management, the polluter pay system, the pay-as-you-throw system, the true sort and not source, those things can be done and have been implemented even at a pilot stage on the islands. And it is far easier to do that on the islands just because, thanks rather to their size. It's easier on the island compared to the big metropolitan centers. Because even if a municipality in Athens manages to implement such a system, the toxicity of the neighboring municipalities will eventually affect affect you if the neighboring municipality has not adopted those technologies yet. Now, the, the stakes are high. Local administration, the vast majority, 332 is the number of municipalities in Greece. The vast majority of those municipalities, we have relatively young decision makers and they have a strong will to make things happen, to make changes. What do they need? What are they missing? Well, they need the tools, and by tools I'm talking about human and financial resources. Because in that way, it will be easier for them to move to the next day. And that next day will not only bring forward a new future, more intensive sustainability, because the three factors of sustainability, I'm talking about a human, the environment and the economy, will coexist under that model. This rationale, this approach will also give place to new positive financial outcomes for cities, villages, towns and local societies. I could go on and on for hours my colleagues know that this is actually my thing. I can go on and on for hours talking about things that have to do with environment, energy, sustainability, so on and so forth. I will put uh, full stop here because I know that the upcoming presentations will be far more scientific than what I have said in order to shed light on numerous aspects that I am not competent to talk about because I tend to get political when I talk about those issues. I would also like you to know that there is also another initiative about uh, four, that will be held on 4 and 5 of September at Psérimos, which is a small island, and a conference will be held there for the promotion of smart islands, meaning how you use new technologies in order to generate um, energy. This will be held under the auspice of KEDA, the Central Union of Greek Municipalities, in collaboration with the Municipality of Kalimnos and Varivulia Vulyakmeni. And uh, innovative things and innovative case studies from abroad will be presented in order to see how they can be implemented in Greece. And we will also talk about very, very small islands in our sea, islands with uh, 10 or 20 residents. Uh, and uh, if left on their fate, maybe in the upcoming few years there will be no citizens left.
on those islands. I believe that this goes beyond the political and municipal policy. This calls for a national policy so that those very small islands can be repopulated so that small islands can attract and retrieve people in a way that will safeguard them and will prevent the population-wise desertification of our beautiful islands in the Aegean Sea. Because we know that population desertification is not an issue that affects only the islands of the Aegean, it also affects the mainland. Anyway, again, I'm so sorry that I couldn't be there. I'm so jealous of you. I envy you for being there because today I had also packed my bathing suit and I'm so disappointed that I'm not going to get to use that. Anyway, I will be more than happy to catch up uh, with my colleagues uh, in the upcoming period. And I'm wishing you all the best for this meeting of yours. I hope that fruitful and constructive conclusions will be drawn. Thank you so much.